Hi, everyone. Welcome. Start. So, hi and welcome. Uh, thank you for joining us for this special presentation, the student experience at Stony Brook University. I'm Amanda Mills, one of the assistant directors of undergraduate admissions. And I want to start out by congratulating you all on your admission to Stony Brook. Uh, we have um, currently over 54,000 applications for admissions. So to say that this was um, a unique year with its with lots of challenges for those of you applying would be an understatement. Um, and we want to, of course, wish you the best of luck during the next phase, which is your decision making process. Um, we would be honored to have you join us as Sea Wolves in August. Um, we're also joined this evening by admissions counselors Evie, Sam, Alyssa, and Catherine, who will be available to answer questions behind the scenes for you in the Q&A. And this session is being recorded and will be available to watch on our YouTube page. And I'll post the link for you to bookmark for later. Our presenters this evening, Dr. Richard Gatto, Vice President for Student Affairs, and Dr. Ricardo McClendon, Assistant Vice Pre President and Dean of Students will be sharing some important and fun information with us. So let's begin. Rick, take it away. Great, Amanda, thank you so much. So we like to call this the Rick and Rick Show. <laughs> so welcome everybody. We're so um, thrilled that you're joining us today. Um, and let me just start by sharing a little about myself. Um, I've, I've got some information I wanted to just relay to you about Stony Brook that I hope gets you, gets you excited about thinking about coming to Stony Brook. But just to share, I absolutely um, am grateful and love working at Stony Brook. It's been my home for the last 21 years. Uh, and so I view today, since you're all been out admitted students, um, today is a great day to be a sea wolf. And um, if you don't know our mascot, uh, Wolfie is the name and Wolfie is incredibly popular on campus. And we really, even though you maybe have not made a decision yet, we consider you today now part of our sea wolves family. So we're just, again, grateful for you and your family to be joining us today. Um, so as you know, Stony Brook is a, is a highly selective institution, um, and certainly we know you were admitted to Stony Brook because you have the talent, you have the drive, you have the passion, the motivation to be successful here. And that's not only you know inside the classroom, which your academics are always your most important part of your time in college, but it's out of the classroom. And that's what Dean Rick and I are going to talk a bit about tonight. Like, what's the student experience like here at Stony Brook? So our goal tonight is to share with you um, what a special place Stony Brook is um, and really you know, hopefully communicate the excitement about being at Stony Brook and the prospect of you becoming a member of, can you believe, the class of 2028 here at Stony Brook. So um, as Amanda introduced me, I'm the VP for Student Affairs. And a lot of people always want to, like, what do you do in Student Affairs? Well, I would say our job is to make sure that you have the absolute best experience of your life here at Stony Brook. And we do that by helping you be an advocate. Um, we help you overcome any obstacles or challenges along the way. We want to help build your confidence level. And we want you to become a more educated person. That's what college is all about. We want you to find your voice, your identity. Um, we want to connect you with all the great parts of our campus and the people who help make it so special. Um, we want to help you to find your passion, like figure out what are your goals in life. And then ultimately, um, while people will often say college is the best four years of your life, I think that's true. Um, but we also want to prepare you for the next chapter of your life beyond Stony Brook. So we do that in very purposeful ways by providing so many opportunities. Um, and those are opportunities, in fact, that help you build your resume and your portfolio. So when you go, you know, to walk across the, you know, the stage of graduation, you know that you are going to be a top candidate for your first professional job or then to pursue graduate or doctoral studies in the future. So let me talk a little about what it's like to be a Seawolf. So as a Seawolf at Stony Brook, there are lots of responsibilities and commitments that's gonna require you to manage your time well. And so um, if you were like me, you may pull a few all-nighters in college <laughs> to get that paper done, to study for a test. That's kind of part of the experience of learning how to manage your time. Um, because as I said earlier, your academic work will always be your top priority. And, you know, I always say to students, um, you don't learn through osmosis. You really have to study. 
Um, if you're like me, maybe did well in high school, but didn't have to apply yourself to earn good grades. But in college, and especially at Stony Brook, you do need to work hard to earn good grades. Um, but that's why we have faculty and the academic support systems that we have in place to help make sure you're going to be successful here. Because we know if you got admitted to Stony Brook, we know you are capable of doing the work to graduate from Stony Brook. Um, but again, no matter what obstacles come in your way or a challenge, you know, we want you to work hard. We have so many resources, which we'll be talking about tonight. And ultimately, you know, don't let, ever let an obstacle stand in your way. We're, our goal is what I call a balance of challenging you to be your very best, but also supporting you so that you can become your best self through that process. So what I thought I would do tonight is give you kind of some broader themes around what I think makes Stony Brook kind of the special place that it is and why I would encourage you to strongly consider us as your next step in your life. So I'm gonna go over six things that I think are bigger themes around who we are as Stony Brook. So first, um, Stony Brook, as you know, is highly ranked and highly regarded. And I think that's always a wonderful feather in all of our caps that you got admitted to a very, very competitive school. Amanda mentioned at the top that we've had record number of applications, over 54,000 applications. So I am so proud that you did make it to this step in the process by getting admitted to Stony Brook. And certainly, as you've done your research on Stony Brook, there are so many accolades that we could talk about why Stony Brook is such a great school. But I think the question I would ask you to ask yourself is, how does the quality of Stony Brook's education ultimately translate to you? And I think, as I said earlier, it, it's all about preparing yourself for the next step in your career, the professional job you're going to be in or graduate school. And the fact is that when you put Stony Brook on a resume, it lets a prospective employer or grad school know that you've gone to a really top school, you're highly qualified, and that you've ultimately learned very important skills. So those could be problem solving skills communication, critical thinking, and ultimately a Stony Brook graduate is someone we know who's driven to succeed. Second, I wanna talk also about safety. And I think it's really important that you know that Stony Brook puts a top priority on your safety and creating a caring environment because that's a foundation to allow you to become your best self. So you know anybody who I've interacted with throughout all my years at Stony Brook, I know they're most successful when they are connected to other people. And you may have heard the term sense of belonging. That's something that's really important to us at Stony Brook, that we feel that our job is to provide for you, whether you're a New York State resident, an out-of-state resident, or an international student coming to Stony Brook, we provide for you your home away from home, whether you're a resident or a commuter student as well. We are your home away from home. And that is accomplished through so many teams working together. We have a great health and wellness team who offers counseling, um, healthcare. We have an amazing and highly regarded recreation center. Um, we have a wonderful student support team of professional staff who are a first stop. I call them kind of the concierge. So when you have a question or problem navigating Stony Brook, that's where you go. And they're always there to help you. And one new addition we have, which we're really proud of, is we offer a 24-7 telecounseling and telemedicine um, program called Ti Timely Care. So we not only give you access to mental and medical help when it's needed you know, during the day, but anytime, day or night, and it's been well, well received by our students. So we're really proud that we provide 24-7 care. And we also know, you know, same as in high school, but also in college, you may experience stress or anxiety, and so we provide those key resources to help you overcome that. Um, we are all committed to helping you be successful. Third thing I wanted to share is that Stony Brook places a very high value on diversity and inclusion. And if you've not visited our campus, I encourage you to do so because you'll get a great tour and a great sense of the vibe of Stony Brook. But one thing you will visibly see on our campus is the incredible diversity of our students. And that's in all aspects, race, age, religion, culture, gender identity, sexual orientation, ability, and more. And as I shared earlier, we have students um, at Stony Brook studying from all around the world. We have a wonderful um, DEI team under the leadership of Dean McClendon. We have a beautiful LGBTQ center, a unity cultural center that's really an umbrella for all of our diverse groups on campus. And our mission as a university, which we're also very proud of, is that we support high achieving students from lower socioeconomic backgrounds in their quest to earn a degree. So access is really important to us as a, as a strong value for us 
as a public higher ed institution. So um, there are environments I have been in in my life where I can say we talk about diversity, but if you join the Stony Brook community, I will assure you that you will live diversity every day um, because you are part of a community of diverse people who look to educate each other about our differences. Um, we are an environment where we respect free speech. We want people to you know, speak their truth, be the, their authentic self, um, but also be respectful, you know, civic minded individuals who really are going to become the next leaders and agents of change uh, as, you know, as part of their development as a sea wolf. Um, the fourth I wanted to share, and, and this is you know, something I think is also very special about Stony Brook. We are a large campus, which to some people could be feel intimidating. I know when I started years ago as an employee, I was like, wow, this is a big campus. But one thing you quickly realize is you'll find your niche, you'll find your people, you'll find your community. And one incredible benefit of a large campus like Stony Brook is that we are the land of opportunity. There are just so many different things that you get to choose from. And I'll highlight a few as we go on tonight. Um, so, you know, some examples are study abroad. We have so many partnerships, whether it's going to our campus in Kenya, Madagascar, we have a group go, goes to Ireland. So, I mean, hundreds of opportunities that you can choose from. We also have, we because we're an R1, a top research university, as you probably heard, we're also a member of the Association of American Universities, the AAU. That's very prestigious for Stony Brook and for you. Um, we offer so many research opportunities for students. And that's something that we highly value in terms of your experience. If you wanna work in a lab, you wanna work any with, with humanists, social scientists, scientists, we've got opportunities for you. We also have, and Dean Rick will share more about this, but we have more than 400 clubs and organizations on our campus, which are phenomenal. We have intramural and sports clubs, we have internships, uh, you can get credit for it as well. Um, we are part of, right, part of the Stony Brook Enterprise is an amazing hospital that serves Eastern Long Island. So that provides great volunteer opportunities. Many of you may be interested in pre-medical or pre-health field. Again, another great opportunity to get experience on your resume right across the street from the university. Um, but we also recently opened, and I'm really proud of this too, a service learning and community service center. And that is um, a space where so many of our CEOs want to help others as part of our mission to serve others. And so for many of our student organizations who are service oriented, that's a great place to work and connect with folks if you want to serve our community better. And I have often said during my time here, you know, if it doesn't exist at Stony Brook, it likely doesn't exist anywhere else. We pride ourselves on being innovative and being top notch in everything that we do in our, in, in our student affairs realm. One thing I would ask that you, and this is all about when you come to Stony Brook, as I said, you're, you'll be among a group of about 3,700 first years. And one thing we do need you to do, though, is to take initiative. And you know, there's a little bit of risk taking when you come into college because it's a new environment. You may walk in and not know anybody. And that's OK, because part of what we will do as your onboarding experience is to help make sure that you get to meet new students. Um, we want you to meet people who are similar to you and different from you and help build your friendship group around that. So taking that initiative is really important. Um, we have a big welcome week. We have just a lot of rich experiences. We have sports teams, athletics. I mentioned club sports. Other ways that you can connect with folks and help kind of strengthen your connection to the university. I also wanted to share who are your peers that you're around. And, and you know, my observation of all the years of being here, and this is why I love our students so much, um, Stony Brook is full of happy, I would say, outgoing and also truly hardworking students. So academics are, as I mentioned earlier, a top priority for our students. They study hard to earn good grades. Um, they take their work seriously. They're very driven in the work that they do. Um, and I would say our students are very results oriented. They, they're looking for a challenge and to accomplish that, that challenge. Um, I think also a really uh, engaged student at Stony Brook is the sponge where you're going to absorb everything around you. Like you take everything that you can to take the take the opportunities in front of you and seize those opportunities to help, again, build your experience and portfolio. And I think what I love about our students is they're really passionate. They're just optimistic. They're just, I would say, our students, they're just good people. Like, I like people that say please and thank you. They're just thoughtful individuals. They're kind to each other. And I think that speaks to the culture of what we've created here at Stony Brook. And one important thing that I know we'll highlight later is that um, we have a really cool thing on campus called 
Red Fridays because our school color, I talked about Wolfie's the mascot we all love. And then our school color is red. So one thing we want to encourage you to do, what you do on campus is wear red every Friday to show your spirit and pride on campus. I also wanted to share too, a bit about the structure of entering as a first year student at Stony Brook, because as I keep talking about, we are committed to your success as a student. Upon your admission to Stony Brook and the communication you receive over the summer, you'll really get a better understanding of what we do to help onboard you successfully as a college student at Stony Brook. Um, one thing you'll learn more about is all of our first year students are part of what we call our undergraduate college program. It is not linked to your major. You can kind of major in whatever you want. But what it is, is a learning community of trying to put a theme together that will be of interest to you to help you connect with other students. Um, so if you live in the residence halls, it is residence hall based too. If you're a commuter student, we'll still engage you in your undergraduate college as well. We have a 101 class where all new students take a course together to really do your introduction to Stony Brook collectively and make sure you learn about it. We have a lot of small introductory classes like writing as well, foreign language to help make sure you're meeting people in your class. We also know um, some students can struggle. And I always um, relay this story. When I was in college, I took my first English class and I thought I knew how to write. And I um, wrote my first paper in first year in college, went to get the grade, looked at the paper, at the, you know, to look at the end of the last page to see how I did. And again, I thought I knew how to write. And apparently when I looked at the last page, I didn't because I didn't even get, you know, a D or an F. I got the lowest grade you could possibly get. I got a please see me. <laughs> and the professor said, uh, Rick, you're not writing well. You need to learn. And so ultimately I went to the tutoring center. I learned how to become a better writer. And that's what we do at Stony Brook because I know all of you coming to Stony Brook have received top grades to get into Stony Brook. But coming to Stony Brook, you're, about, you're among a, a group of very, you know, highly accomplished students. And so there may be cases where you'll struggle in a course and that may require you to work harder and that's okay. And that's why at Stony Brook, we provide the resources. We have health centers in math and chemistry, for example. We have an academic success and tutoring center. We have a residential tutoring center. We have lots of resources to help you both one-on-one -on -one and in small groups, make sure you have the resources um, to, to help, whether it's managing your time better, study skills, or learning course content to make sure that you'll be successful in your classes. So again, just another example of our commitment to you and your success. Also wanted to share that, you know, we have a huge, huge alumni base at Stony Brook. And while we're a young institution, we're only about 60 years old, we do have a strong alumni base who are very much connected with our students um, and they help provide internship and other opportunities for our students. Um, and and they're, they're great people to, to talk to from, for a mentoring opportunity, um, for various events that we have. A lot of realms work with companies that come recruit on our campus. So those are really great connections that we build. And also to share too, our residence hall system, we're really proud. Um, we have the second largest residence hall system in all of New York State. We house about 10,500 students of whom 9,500 are, are undergraduates. Um, and we have about 7,500 undergrads who commute to campus um, either as commuters or they might be living in off-campus housing. So we have a proud, you know, robust system where we um, certainly, you know, engage students in um, thoughtful education, community building, social events um, through everything that we do in our residence halls. So, you know, again, we have so many resources, you know, the Career Center I just wanted to do as a last highlight as something that I'm really proud of as well. We have incredible um, resources around job fairs. Um, a lot of our students work on our campus who have employment opportunities to not only be connected, but also make money. Um, we work with so many employers uh, around the job market, both um, through gaining experience as an intern, but also through summer opportunities and then also full-time opportunities upon graduation. So, so many ways um, that they provide help, not only the basics of our resume support, but interviewing skills and also making sure that you, again, will be a really strong candidate in the market. So th there's so many other resources to share about, but that's kind of the highlight where I wanted to leave it for now. Um, and I, I just want to end by, we're going to take questions after Dean Rick goes, but just wanted to share that we hope, you know, you'll make the decision to join Stony Brook and the Seawolves family. We'd love to have you be part of our community. So um, I'll stop there and let me toss it to my colleague, Dean Rick, to take it from here and share more about student life at Stony Brook. 
Thank you, VP Rick. Uh, so thanks again for taking the time to uh, participate and, and be a part of this uh, lively discussion. Um, what I'm excited for is what you can expect when you come to Stony Brook. Um, during the summertime, we have uh, peer assistant leaders who we call PALS, um, and their job throughout the summer is to help aid you in your onboarding, um, how to get you connected to the online orientation um, activities and sessions, but also to answer other questions you might have about how to navigate through um, and, and be prepared uh, to arrive on campus in August. And so once you arrive physically on campus and you've moved into your residence hall, um, we do what's called weeks of welcome, where before classes get started, um, we have an opportunity to connect with everyone and bring them together to start building community. Um, let's see, let me uh, try to figure out how to share my screen properly. Uh, yeah, just do swap presenter. That should work, Rick. Yep. Thank you. Um, so these are some images of, of Weeks of Welcome where you're going to engage with all upperclassmen, all of our peer assistant leaders, um, our Stony Brook president, Maureen McGinnis. She's engaged in all the activities throughout the week. Uh, VP Rick, the deans of all the schools um, are engaged. So you're going to meet a lot of folks um, who are here to welcome you to campus um, and to ensure that your first week before classes start, that you're building community and that you feel like you've got the right resources. Um, during you know the first week, uh, which is welcome week, um, that's a chance to meet our athletic teams um, and learn more about athletics on campus and how to engage. Uh, we go to a lot of the athletic events and we're wearing red to support our fellow Seawolves who are on the field. We are going to events and Staller and supporting Seawolves who are on the stage. Um, we also do a lot of voter engagement activities during that week to ensure that students understand the issues that are going on and that are important to them and that they understand how to vote and be a part of the voting process. And then we do uh, a lot of diversity education called Seawolves This Is Us, um, a great opportunity to explore your own identities, identities of those around you in the community, but also understanding the values we hold at Stony Brook when it comes to celebrating uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion uh, on campus among our faculty, staff, and students. And, and lastly, the week is really about how to connect with others um, who are also new to Stony Brook, how to make that first group of friends um, so you know who you want to go to the events out with. So you want to know who you want to sit in the dining hall and have a meal with as well. So the first week itself is all about getting you settled into building community. And then after the first week, there are a ton of campus programs that you do not want to miss out on because students are in the driver's seat to a lot of the programs that, that get created here. And so a lot of our students, they work for different offices and they're the ones helping us plan these programs. But also we're taking good feedback from students. Next, please. Uh, Wolfie Land is the very first major campus event where over 6,000 students show up. It's a carnival. Um, it's held on campus. Students can win lots of prizes. We have lots of vendors come out and, and, and showcase what they're doing. Student organizations are there to promote themselves. Wolfie pops in once in a while and, and does a kind of a quick tour and engage with students. But it's a fun way to gather as a community uh, after the first couple of weeks of classes have begun, just to take a little deep, you know, uh, you know, you know, release of like energy and say, okay, we've studied for the past couple of weeks, we've been in classes, now let's have a little bit of fun. Next slide. Um, in October, we have what's called Family Weekend. Between, between the end of September, early October, um, we will have what's called Family Weekend, uh, where we invite parents to come back to campus to check out how are things going with you? What, it, what is it that you're experiencing in these first couple of weeks being on campus. It's a great chance for them to come, not only check in on you, but also um, reconnect with campus resources. It allows for us to share with parents how to help be your coach and your cheerleader as you navigate the experience. As I mentioned, it'll be a great chance to connect with myself, VP Rick, President McGinnis, and all the deans 
uh, of, of the different colleges who are who are uh, a part of the community. Uh, but again, also to meet other siblings and family members who are coming back for that week. So it's about two days. Um, it's usually held over an actual weekend. Um, in September, if not October, and it'd be a great excitement and imagery for everybody around campus. And these are just some images of what you can expect. Next slide. Um, a wonderful event that brings both alumni and students together is homecoming. This is the this is a a a weekend. Sometimes a couple of days filled with activities of rooting for our football team. Uh, they are folks who have been working very hard all summer to get prepared for their first or second game of the season, um, which is a home game. And so we invite alumni to come back. Families are also encouraged to attend if they can, if they couldn't make it to um, family weekend, come back for homecoming. But a chance to connect with alumni and other Sea Wolves about their experiences and to celebrate that camaraderie we all have to be Sea Wolves. We have several performing groups um, who are on stage during this time, and they are exploring and sharing their culture um, with us on stage. And it's just a good energy around campus. So one of the things that we have is the Royal Court, where individuals are selected by their communities to have these roles um, as kind of like the Royal Court and representatives of the university. Um, again, good fun energy uh, with students. Um, our band performs during this time frame as well to get folks excited about the, the about the uh, about the fight song, um, which is really cool. Which you you would have heard about it um, throughout the summer, and we'll teach it to you throughout the summer. But also we'll teach you again during Welcome Week. So it's a really good chance to just be in community, connect with alumni, network with alumni, and this again is sponsored in a partnership between all the areas, including alumni relations. Uh, one amazing event that I think I love and hate at the same time is Spooky Brook. This is organized, another event by our, our undergraduate student government, um, where they take over the entire student activity center and they have these uh, decorated rooms where folks can kind of dress up in costume, um, student groups can perform, and they have kind of this whole haunted room house type atmosphere. It's scary, but yet fun at the same time. Uh, and it's also a great opportunity and way for, for students to kind of do something during the Halloween time. Uh, so that that weekend, uh, we put on what's called Spooky Brook, and it's just a, it's just a fun activity. Uh, the next event that we have is called Light the Brook. Um, it's, it's when a period of time in the, in the fall semester where we get together and we literally light up the campus. Um, our undergraduate student government does a great job organizing this event, bringing the community together. And when you're on campus at night and the trees are well lit and the path uh, down the academic mall is well lit, it just looks so beautiful on campus. And so we celebrate the changing of the season um, where students kind of come together, lots of food, lots of entertainment is going on. Um, and it's just a fun time. We also have what's called midnight breakfast. And for midnight breakfast, uh, what I learned that's unique to Stony Brook is at midnight, no matter where you are, students will just scream to release the energy, to uh, reset for the, for, for, for the day and just say, you know what? A lot's happened. I'm going to let out some energy, and it's really cool to see. Um, it's a little bit scary at first, but trust me, you, you, when you're looking for that, that, that stress relief moment after studying for a few hours, it can just release endorphins, and you're just like, okay, I just let that go. It's out there. But the breakfast time, um, that's a chance for uh, some of the faculty and staff to serve students breakfast. Um, we do it usually around exam time, and it's just a big fun time with you know music and games and community just coming together. So you see VP, Rick, and myself, and a few others just walking around campus, serving students throughout the evening, and just kind of checking on folks to see how their semester is going so far. Once the semester kind of, you know, keeps going, we have this thing called Winterfest. Um, and so it's a chance where faculty and staff can submit proposals to teach someone 
of their craft or, in a, or or something that's important to them, and they want to share their knowledge with the campus community. Uh, for Winterfest, because I'm from Charleston, South Carolina, Southern food is, Southern comfort food, should I say, is a huge deal in my community. And so I taught um, students how to cook the famous Charleston shrimp and grits. Um, some folks did um, teaching folks about time management and communication. Some folks did um, intramural uh, pickleball playing uh, or others taught folks how to dance, um, some dancing class and a lot of cooking classes and craft making classes. So it's an opportunity to learn a, a new skill set, uh, but also be in community with others who are uh, either uh, on the faculty or other students. And it's open to everyone at the start and within the Sunny Brook community. Uh, another event that I really like, it's called Brookfest. This event is selected by the students. Our undergraduate student government will send a poll out asking students what kind of artists do they want to see perform at the annual concert, which happens in the spring. And Brookfest, once students vote on it, they go through the whole negotiation process to find that artist and to see if they'd be willing to come here to Stony Brook. So this amazing event brings in several thousand students and alumni to participate um, because it really is a cool event. And if you have an artist who's willing to come to Stony Brook and perform, usually it's about three or four acts. This year, they're going to add something new to it and allow for students to also perform during, Sprook, um, during Brook Fest. So this concert series is pretty cool, and folks come out to participate because they want to be in community, they want to see their favorite artists, and they want to have a voice in this whole process too. When the weather gets nice, we do what's called Earth Stock. Um, Earth Stock is about sustainability and awareness. Um, a lot of us sustainability student groups are out and about teaching folks um, things about recycling or how to save the planet or renewable energy, those kinds of things that just make us more aware and conscious of how we can do our part to protect our planet. Uh, it's a great outdoor event. We do uh, what's called the uh, rubber duck race. So you you know, buy rubber duck and, and, and you let the duck race and you win a prize at the end. All the ducks are numbered. And so the first one down, the uh, there's like a little fountain that we have um, on the academic mall. The ducks race down it, and it's a really cool thing. Lots of food trucks and vendors come out to share what they're doing that's, that's green friendly um, or sustainable related. And again, it's when the weather is nice and we can celebrate being outside again. Another event, speaking of water, is called Roth Regatta. This event is where student organizations can only use duct tape, cardboard, and string, and prayers. And they will jump in the river with their beautifully designed boat and try to race across um, Roth Pond. You do not want to be in Roth Pond any time throughout the year except for this one special time of the year. It's beautiful to sit out there and relax with your friends, um, but it's not a pond that you want to go into except during this time to race across. Um, and it, again, we have several thousand students who are part of this event. They make some really cool designs. Um, and if you just you know were to Google Stony Brook Roth Regatta, you see pictures from, from previous years. It's a really cool, fun event. Um, again, you'll find the president, VP Rick and I there. We're engaging with students. We got lots of vendors who come out. Um, but this is one of the fun events that I enjoy watching, but you will never see me participate. Only one of us, Ricks, had enough courage to get in the water. Um, and I'll, I, I won't say it was me. It was definitely VP Rick. But there might be a commercial out there um, of VP Rick promoting Roth Regatta where he's physically in the water. He took one for the team. <laughs> Um, another event that we do to celebrate diversity on our campus and more globally is called Strawberry Fest Diversity Day. Uh, we work in partnership with our uh, dining uh, establishment to bring cultural foods to the forefront and celebrate the history and the diversity of the food and also teach folks about that culture and the food and, and what it means to be in community. It's a very much so fun event. And of course, Strawberry is a part of it because of the area that we're in. A lot of the culture groups perform during this time frame, but it is a really, really fun event um, that you want to participate in. And it's hosted in our Student Activity Center. And there's multiple stations for folks to kind of navigate through, try some really amazing foods, but also learn at the same time. 
And then the last event is called Siblings Weekend. It's one of our newer events that we do where and we invite siblings who may be thinking about college or want to be inspired to attend college or learn more about what college life is like. Um, we bring them back to campus for a weekend in the spring semester as a way to connect with their sibling um, and then, you know, learn about your journey. What are you experiencing um, as a college student, but also meet other siblings who may be thinking about college or have questions or curious about college. So this entire experience is really designed for you to, like I say, build community. It's designed for you to engage with, with one another throughout the school year, learn about our campus traditions, but also leave a legacy for yourself. Um, students are in the driver's seat to all of these programs. They're giving us feedback. They're giving us ideas on how to improve it. And so we invite you and encourage you not only to attend the events, but share your thoughts on the events. Give us feedback. Um, and when you're ready, if you want to work on some of these events, volunteering your time or taking a campus job allows for you to help us improve um, the community overall. So that's what you should expect and see uh, when you come to campus uh, and you participate in programming. Um, a lot of our programs are listed in two ways. One, we send out a newsletter called Campus Connect. We send it twice a week, one at the beginning of the week, so you know kind of what, what events are coming, and then we do a weekend edition. And then second, um, we put all of our events on the Cork app, um, and our social media account called SP Engage. So we make sure that every club and organization, we make sure that all departments put as much events out there so you know what how you can spend your time outside the classroom, uh, not only engaging with folks, but learning, you know, who you are, what your interest is, and exploring those things. So I'll, I'll stop there and, you know, we'll, we'll take some questions about your experiences and how we can help you navigate. So thank you so much. I've seen the questions coming in, the numbers going up and up. So we have a lot. We've Luckily, we have a strong team answering questions behind the scenes because there's no way we're answering 70 questions <laughs> live. But we can get to some of the good ones um, to share with everybody. Let's see. So we had a lot of questions about when everyone can move in. <laughs> which is such great news you you know you have some things to do before you move in um but i don't think those dates are set yet right they are, still... are. I, I can jump oh. in with a little bit of stuff so uh, let me just give a and dear talked about welcoming but let me even take you back a little bit further so we obviously have the admitted student days you all know about um but over the summer you'll receive a lot of information from dean rick's team um from what's called the new um student uh office of new student and transition programs and that office will communicate a lot of information that may be around immunizations it's around some modules you'll be participating in there's um some zoom sessions it's your advising piece that you'll hear from your academic advisor getting registered so all that will happen then maybe there'll be some placement exams so a lot of that you've already deposited you've actually already seen some of those kind of checklist items to work through um, we try to keep them to a minimum, but we know there's some things to, in order for you to be successful, we want you to make sure you're, you're kind of in time getting those things done. Um, one other thing that's a program that we started a few years ago that I hope some of you might be interested in, it's called SOAP. It's our Siebel's Outdoor Adventure Program. Our Rec and Wellness team sponsor that. Um, and students, if you're interested in that program, you actually come come in a little bit early um, and it's a, it's a team building activity that we do. And you go to an off-campus adventure. So whether it's kayaking, a ropes course, adventure land, I mean, all, all these different things that we do. Um, so if you're looking, once you deposit, if you're interested in that, you'll be receiving information from their team during the month of June to then sign up for that. But I will give you the date. So just so you know, all of our first year students will either, I mean, if you're a student athlete, you come a little bit earlier, but for rest of our students, um, you'll either be assigned Monday, August 19th, or, or Tuesday, August 20th. So we have half of our students come in one day and half the other. It just helps a lot with the traffic flow and making sure you have a really smooth check-in experience. You will get information from what's called campus residences, it's our on-campus housing office, about going, and you actually will go into the system. Um, it's called Star Res, and you'll be picking not only your room and information, but also the date and time of your arrival based upon um, your family needs and whatnot. And then they'll communicate a lot with you about what to bring, what to pack, what not to bring. 
and you'll get a lot more information from them um, as the summer progresses. So no worries, you will get a lot of communication from us over the summer. Yes, and um, Rick brought up a really good point that the Start SBU portal not only was how you kind of found out about your application and managed your application to Stony Brook, but that will continue with you through the summer all the way up to uh, moving on campus. So, or even, or if you're commuting to that welcome week. So it's important that you're, you know, checking that frequently, making sure our emails aren't going to your spam or junk mail, which does happen. <laughs> Got a lot of emails to read through. So my yeah, man, can personal I just jump tip. Into, can yeah. I just add, as you mentioned, it's really important that we communicate through your Stony Brook email address. So, and that's like, once you're a student as well, like everything is through your Starbucks email address. So please, please make sure you check that regularly. That is an important communication tool for all of us to get messages to you. Yes. Now this is a tricky one because everyone, we got a lot of questions about this, both pre-submitted questions and I've seen them coming in. Um, what's the campus car policy? So campus vehicle policy. So, so let me check first, if you're a commuter student, you, you can have a commuter student as soon as you arrive at Stony Brook, because um, obviously you need to get to campus <laughs> um, if you're commuting from home or an off-campus location. We have a set location, it's called Lot 40 is the name, where students um, will park their car. Um, currently, there's no charge to park in that lot. Um, the You take a bus to the main campus, it's about a 10-minute bus ride, and the buses loop regularly throughout the day, and you can actually download an app to see where the buses are in real time, so to plan your day accordingly. It's a great system. We do also for commuters offer a commuter premium parking pass where you can pay for a parking pass to have parking um, closer to the center of campus. Um, sometimes there's a wait list for that because, you know, as you're here, upper class students will want that first. Um, but that is an option to put yourself on a list when, time, when the time comes to be able to pay for that if you'd like to consider that option. If you're a resident student, you're not permitted to have a car on campus until you actually earn what's called junior standing. And that's based upon credit counts. It's not term count, it's how many credits you've earned. Um, and you need to have earned, and that could include um, college credit and high school, you know, any, any credits part of your degree. Um, once you have 57 or more credits, you can have a car on campus. Um, there are designated lots if you live on campus where you'll park you know, pretty near your residence hall, not like in front of your door, like you might at a home driveway. Um, but it's fairly near your residence hall where you're working. Currently, that parking also is not, there's no charge for that parking. If you are a first year student or a sophomore and, and there is an appeals process, if you have a job off campus or there's a medical appointment or some valid reason where you need a car, there is an appeals process um, that we can communicate with you upon your arrival to Stony Brook if, if that is a need. And that's reviewed by a committee to see if then you can get a parking pass sooner. Excellent. Um, and so we have a question that's kind of two parts. So they were asking about gender inclusive housing, but also resources for LGBTQ uh, plus students. Right. So I will. Yes. Yeah, so we call it GIH gender inclusive housing that is offered as well. I would recommend if you specific questions about that to email reside. It's R-E-S-I-D-E -E at stonybrook.edu. Um, they can share more about that process with you about, about the ins and outs of that selection, the, the various locations. Because what we do is we designate gender inclusive housing, either suites or other locations where first years live in, in, in um, traditional style residence halls of where students live. So we do value that. And um, again, small number of the students select that option, but it is certainly an option that we want to make sure it's available to students so they feel comfortable in their living environment. Um, you know, in terms of the LGBTQ Center, I'm really proud of this space. Um, I identify as gay myself, so I'm also very proud of the fact that this is a really important part of our identity at Stony Brook. Um, we are one of the few LGBTQ centers in the country, and um, it's a space for not only students who identify as LGBTQ, but also allies also frequent the space to support our students. Um, it's an open space actually near what's called West Side Dining on campus. Um, it was renovated about five years ago as a beautiful, beautiful space. So a lot of students will hang out. Um, we have, uh, uh, you know, uh, a lot of events. We do a lavender graduation for our graduating seniors. Um, they do host a whole series of programs. Um, 
it just just throughout the year about trying to build community, uh, you know, within our within our LGBTQ community, and also again making sure that um, we host a lot of pride events. We have Pride Fest on campus, so lots of ways that our communities actually get together and celebrate each other. Um, so uh, we do a Thanksgiving meal as well. Like so, lots of different things throughout the year that the team uh, organizes and sponsors. And, and we also have a, a lot of locations across campus where we have gender inclusive restrooms as well um, in different parts of our student activity center um, or certain academic buildings. So that's also an important part of our identity footprint. And a lot of that was um, spearheaded and advocated um, in, in collaboration with our student government and our LGBTQ center as well. Thanks. Um, so we have a question about so they asked, like, how is student life? But we, we've we talked about that. Um, but they wanted to know if Stony Brook had um, what what the kind of diversity breakdown or stats are. But I think just in general, you know, does Stony Brook feel like a diverse campus? Where are students coming from? Who are they? Yeah. So so Stony Brook, we actually do not have a majority from a from a racial perspective, uh, race identity. We don't have a majority race. Um, we are, a pro I mean, these are approximate numbers. The website will give more specifics, but we're, we're about um, close to 35% who identify as Asian or Asian American, about an equal number identify as Caucasian or white, and then Hispanic, Latino, and then African American, Black African American. You're kind of balancing that to make the 100%. Um, very small Native American population um, on our campus. But I would say, again, this is one of the points of pride for our campus. We are so incredibly diverse. and. Again, what I love about our campus is that in our classrooms, if I go to any space, any lounge on campus, just different people are talking to each other and building friendships and relationships of people that maybe they never would have connected with in their entire life. So that's, I think, a special point for us that we hear not only we talk about it, but we do um, every week in student affairs, we do what's called a pulse survey. And we survey 20% of our students because we want to hear your feedback. So as a course this semester, you'll get services. Tell us like, what do you like? What don't you like? What can we do better? And I would say the top thing that's always commented on is how diverse and inclusive Stony Brook is. I hear it over and over again from our students. And I just wanted to clarify, because we got this question a few times, um, the misconception that we own, we we don't own, we offer housing for everyone, campus residences, freshmen, sophomore, junior, senior, graduate students. So we won't kick you out. You just got to meet your deadlines. <laughs> right. I mean, just to point out what's important to know, so what you coming as first year students, you are guaranteed housing for eight consecutive semesters. So that's really important and helpful. But so it's important to know if you hop out of housing and go to commute or live off campus and then want to come back in, you would need to go on a wait list. Um, we are, though, it's exciting. We're in the process. As I mentioned, we have 10,500 residents on campus. We are building and growing. We have a new residence hall in development um, in what's called our Tabler community. And we're also in the process of also building additional upper class and graduate student housing. So more to come on that in the coming years. But this is really exciting for us. But as long as you stay in the system, you are guaranteed your housing for four years. And I saw some questions in the chat that, yes, we do. All of our first year students are primarily, primarily it's double rooms. Um, and we do have mostly traditional style residence halls, which are corridor and then a common bathroom. I will say I lived in that my first year experience in college. And I think it's the best, best living arrangement because it's the most open to building community among a bunch of people on your floor. So I think it's a great for a first year experience. All of our first year students actually do also live together in one of three communities. So you're not interspersed with other upper, cl upper class students. It's all first years together. After your first year living in housing, if you want to continue on campus housing, you typically you could stay generally where you are in that kind of style of housing. Most of our students will move to suite style housing, where there'll be typically kind of an apartment where it's three bedrooms, a doubles, a bathroom, and a living room in a suite in a building. Um, and then in that building, there'll be, you know, laundry, there'll be, you know, a kitchen that's kind of for everyone's use in the building. Then by the time you become a junior or senior, many of our students will live in our apartment style housing, where that does have singles and double rooms, common living room, bathroom, and a kitchen in the space. So those are just some, you know, we offer lots of different housing options to appeal to different types 
Again, some of them are based upon your class year and credits earned um, because we want to be fair in the system that you might get what I would argue better choice of housing the, the more time you've been at Stony Brook. So this question I really like because it means that the students are thinking about next year. Um, they want to know um, what should, how should they manage all of these events and all these, you know, clubs and organizations and traditions and things to get involved in with, you know, what is, you know, kind of known as a, a rigorous <laughs> academic experience at Stony Brook. How do how does Stony Brook support students to manage all of these new things? Yeah, that, that's a great question. I mean, again, we do have over 400 clubs and organizations um, and growing. Uh, we have lots of activities throughout the week. We have what's called Campus Lifetime um, that usually is on a Wednesday. I think we're adding one more to Mondays um, where there are no classes that take place during Campus Lifetime. There might be a couple of labs here and there, but for the most part, Campus Lifetime is the best time to really get engaged and then on nights and weekends. Um, so what most students do is they'll fill in their schedule with their classes and they'll fill in labs and study time. And if they have a job on campus, they'll fill that into the schedule. It's all the open extra, I'll call extra time that they have available. Um, a lot of the times it's good to, like, like I said, it's come during campus lifetime or late nights and weekends, because you need that time to like recharge, time to step away from the laptop, step away from the books, let the brain process a little bit. So that way you can, you know, take in more information and then get back to the books. So our students, they will pick and choose events throughout the week to go to and then get back to their studies. Um, a lot of, we do what's called Beyond the Brook, where they may decide to go to an off-campus activity in the city or somewhere here on Long Island because we want students to explore the area. We offer bus trips to Port Jefferson as well. They need to go shopping and get supplies and materials. Um, so, you know, we help students by not only having our clubs and orgs plan events and help us navigate what that looks like, but students, they work for our offices. So they help us determine exactly where that time and scheduling fits into programming. Um, and because we have over 26,000 students on campus, we try to do enough programming so everybody has a chance to kind of get in um, and, and make, you know, opportunities to, to connect with each other through those programs. Our student government, both the undergraduate and the graduate organization, they're also part of that process. So it really depends on what your schedule looks like and where you find that, that flexibility to kind of take a break and, and just recharge. And we also have a great student support team. And so when you feel like you're struggling uh, and, and, and keeping up with academics or you're navigating uh, some life issues, the student support team, they're there to guide you through that process. So that way there's somebody who can help you, you know, think through um, how do I get back on track with my academics or how do I ask for support when I'm trying to navigate, you know, a class that, that might be troubling or a professor that I need to connect with about what I'm going through, whether it be sick or family issue, whatever. We've got people around campus who can also talk you through how to navigate your schedule and your professors. Thank you. Um, what food options are available to students? Do you have vegan or vegetarian options? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you want to take it, you take it right. No, we have a great selection of food on campus. Um, a lot of our uh, folks who are vegan who have special dietary needs. Um, we have a great campus dietitian. She's very much open to hearing feedback um, and putting things on our menus at a, a lot of our um, East and West dining, which is the larger eat-in dining halls. We have a lot of our retail establishments that have um, we've got hello. New York that's, you know, inside East, Din East Side Dining Hall. A lot of our options are vegan. They will put displays on some of the buffet items that are vegan or gluten-free related. So it's a lot about communicating with our um, dietitian about what your needs are, but also looking for those specially labeled items on the bars as well. And the food is actually pretty good here. We also have food trucks around campus that also serve our students' needs too. And we have Subway, Dunkin', Starbucks, Pete's Coffee, what else? I'm trying to think of the other big ones that we have and just lots of other options. So, Yes, and Stony Brook is hosting um, with the campus dietitian or nutritionist, uh, Stony Brook Eats Campus Dining Program, navigating with food allergies and dietary needs, but she'll be able to answer any questions. So if you want to come to another virtual event in early April, that's a good one because she will have lots of details about 
you know, dining yeah. on yeah. campus and all of the services available. And we also serve kosher. And also we do, have, you'll, you'll hear from Laura in that session. Um, one of our main dial is a nut free facility as well. So again, we try to do our best to navigate what individual needs are. Laura is fantastic in terms of working with students and families about needs. And we also have a food pantry on campus as well, um, which is located in the Stony Brook Union. So students have additional needs um, that's open to our, 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 our faculty staff as well. I was thinking as we were, you know, you we were talking about all, there's so much to know about Stony Brook. Do you have any last minute, you know, kind of pieces of advice about, you know, this, the time that our guests are in is they've gotten their admission decision. They're waiting to hear from financial aid, which we know is delayed because of the new FAFSA. And we've extended our deadline to May 15th because of that. Um, and we're hoping to get packages and financial aid information in April. So you have plenty of time to make that financial decision. Um, but Rick and Rick, do you have any kind of advice for how to make the decision about where to go and what Sto if Stony Brook would be a good fit and why? That's a really good question. Um, I, I think for me, I like the peer-to-peer -peer approach. Um, again, our peer assistant leaders throughout the summer will connect with those who have been admitted um, and those who are looking to, to, to come into Stony Brook. And I think either coming to campus for Admitted Students Day um, or, you know, participating in one of the summer sessions with the PALS is a great way to ask those questions peer to peer, getting another student's perspective um, on what it's like to be at Stony Brook and how they navigate Stony Brook and what value they find as being a seawolf. Um, I think that not only helps one determine if Stony Brook's a right fit, but also answer other questions that you may have throughout the summer. It's not just a one time I'll connect with a peer, but throughout the summer I can connect with a peer um, and navigating those resources. So I like the peer to peer approach. I think it's beneficial um, to having somebody who's who's walked that path um, more recently, um, but also someone who can tell you what it's like you know, on campus. And I, I have the good fortune of going back to my high school. I grew up on Long Island, so I go to my high school every year and do this very kind of admissions talk about thinking through how you make that decision. And certainly it can be overwhelming. And maybe you're in that boat now as you're getting offers of admission and trying to evaluate and, and as Amanda mentioned, waiting for the financial aid offers, which is an important part of that decision-making process too. Once you gather all information, it's really a matter of sitting down and I think as a family's talking through, well, kind of the pros and cons of every option. Um, I do hope that for Stony Brook, I hope a conversation like this helps you understand more about what we can and do offer for you as an institution. Um, every school, you know, is different in the country. There's, there are just differences. Um, I think it's really up to you to make the decision that feels right for you. Like, I think when you're on a campus or through a conversation like this, you kind of, like, would I connect with these people? Do I feel, would I feel like this is the right fit for me? I think that's only that's something that you're going to have to decide what feels right to you. Um, but I would also encourage you to come to the campus if you haven't had a tour yet or come to Admitted Students Day. Um, I would also recommend ask a lot of questions, you know, keep asking questions. As Dean Rick mentioned, I think talking to other fellow Seawolves, they're going to give you a look. We're we are administrators, but we're cool people. <laughs> you know, we love working with students, but we can't offer you the student perspective only students can so i would encourage you to talk to students about their experience um and 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 kind of put that all together in the blender and figure out okay what makes the most sense for me at this point because geography may matter the type of campus urban rural the major i mean all those th things are factors you're going to need to consider as you make it so it's so i don't envy you because it's a hard decision to make um but i do hope we've given you enough information tonight to help kind of you lean in more to Stony Brook because we'd be so thrilled to have you here. And also just remember, you know, uh, Wolfie, our campus mascot is a two-time SUNY mascot champion. He's the coolest mascot across the state of, of New York. So if that's a win for you as well, just know that's important. Oh, and the other thing is the big news for your class would be for class. As of 2028, we are actually going to be installing a bronze Wolfie statue. So that will be an iconic thing in the center of campus for lots of family photos. So if that didn't convince you, I don't know what will. <laughs>
That's great. And we will be sending you um, by text a link to Masuni Mascot Madness in a few weeks. I, it's yes. got to be kicking off soon, right? We're almost at March. So. Right, but we're afraid people, all the schools are going to vote against us. So we, no. we need your help. We Ooh. need your help. Come on. <laughs> yes, Wolfie, everyone come vote on. for Wolfie. Um, thank you so much. We had over a hundred, we had 125 questions. I actually am so sorry I had to shut the questions off because there was no way I didn't want to leave anyone without getting their questions answered. Um, so we are so happy that you were able to um, join us this evening. Thank you, Rick and Rick for sharing such wonderful in information. Thank you to the admissions team behind the scenes, rapidly typing, <laughs> bravo. Um, and we wish you, our guests, the best of luck with your admission um, college decisions. I hope you get in where you want and you know choose the right place for you. And we're here to help if you need us. Um, we posted a couple of things for you in the chat that'll hope, hopefully help you connect with us about topics that are important to you. And if we don't see you at one of the upcoming admitted student tours or admitted student days or admitted Seawolf days, we hope to see you in August at Welcome Week. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Good night. Good night.